safer right here. I, really I need you. Make sure you have it. Pull it out. Hold it up. Let me see it. I need you to put a proper heading on this paper. Yes, ma'am. What's the proper heading? Name, date, and class grade. What we're going to do is we're going to practice a reading strategy known as close reading. Close reading. We're going to read. We're going to read the passages. And what I want you to do the first time you read it, just read this first page. Do not answer the questions. <laughs> With a pen or a pencil, any words you don't know. Just the front. something you're not sure about. All right, like for example, I put Earth's atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen gas. My question is what makes up the other 20%? So write questions, take a couple minutes and do that. Just those first two paragraphs. Inviting me in to observe you. What class is that? Biology? Yes, biology. Biology. Um, to watch you teach close reading. That is our school wide initiative. And um, it's critical as we execute Common Core State Standards. Yes. Right? Yes. First of all, let me just start by um, commending you on what I was not going to observe, which okay. was the level of questioning that was executed well, in your class. You. I appreciate that. So you look like a pro there. <laughs> thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I think it's, so today's lesson, um, you had the students do a close read. Um, so I'm just going to ask you, how do you think it went? I think it went okay. I mean, it was uh, my first time with this actual close read, which is the nitrogen cycle, and it's still pretty, uh, it's still a new concept with, uh, that I've been incorporating into um, the classroom. So really going through the text and pulling out some of the vocabulary since it is a new topic and this is still a new concept, close reading, mm -hmm. um, and just introducing new strategies for mm -hmm. it. So we're still learning and I'm still learning and kind of seeing what works for each class and okay. changing it as I go, okay. but I think it went pretty well. Okay. Based on the student work, what lets you know it went well? I think it went well because they were able to, um, by walking around, I could see them uh, coming up with questions, writing them. Um, um, in the margins, I saw them circling words they were unsure about and underlining. And then as we discussed it and we read through it as a class, they were able to pull out that vocabulary that they weren't familiar with. Okay, so I have two questions um, based on what I observed. You asked the students to read through 
a first time. Yes, just a cold read. Just a cold read. And then had them to go through and apply the protocol that you had on the screen. Right. Why did you do that? So I think sometimes they don't understand that even uh, quote unquote experts have to read things multiple times. And so what I want them to get in the habit of is reading something first, just kind of reading it. I've been doing it with like videos and things like that. I'll tell them, watch the video first, just watch it. And now go back and, and look for, you know, pull notes out. Because I think you need to just see it, see it in its context and just kind of read through it and then try to pull out information. And so that understanding that you may not get everything the first time. Absolutely. And so to just get in that habit of doing that. So the, the cold read was a one time, it's just a couple of paragraphs, read it first and then go through and try to, otherwise they're focusing on the highlighting and the underlining and right. they're not reading and they're not comprehending. Exactly, exactly. You had one student document um, the words that they pulled out why did you decide to use that method? Um, I think it's a method that they're familiar with. Um, we'll pull the, the one sheets and kind of do that, you know, have a student come up, whether it's a different activity when we're doing our, our unit two vocabulary. So they're used to being of, of standing up in front of the class and kind of working together as a group to pull out words or um, use vocabulary and break it down that way. So I figured, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Just use what I've already been using. Right. So, say, um, with the chart, I would have the students um, list those words as well that okay. that they circled um, as so they're being listed list? here. This on in the margins of okay. their um, paper as a strategy. And the reason I say that is, is that because we really, this practice is a good practice, mm -hmm. but we wanted to translate to the individual. It is a great whole group task. Right. But it helps the students begin to make sense okay. of um, of what they're reading about. So you wrote the nitrogen cycle. So imagine if your students um, did a close read, they wrote the title, and then they began to pull out language from the text mm -hmm. that had to deal with mm. the nitrogen cycle. So just making a list of the words that they pulled out. Yeah, the, the information science. that they're pulling out. That becomes important information. It becomes information actually correlated with the nitrogen cycle, okay. which is what this text happens to be about. Okay. And I would also maybe even start, you had this question up here, but you said um, the nitrogen cycle. Mm -hmm. I would turn that into a question. What? Right. Do you know why? Because then it kind of frames what what is the main idea, what's the purpose of this the purpose? purpose of this read? Yep, it says the purpose. A question here for myself, get a chance to um, actually ask my students, but my question was, what info do I know just from the title? What do you think about that? Mm, I think that's great as long as you ask the question and model for them how to answer it. Okay. So the last point that I would make is while I watched you um, with the class, um, I would have authentically began to highlight initially. Okay. You gave them an example. But, so when you highlighted nitrogen, I would say, okay, my task is to circle words for this purpose, highlight words for this purpose. So as I start reading this, it says nitrogen is a crucial element. I'm highlighting nitrogen because... Okay. And so walk them through maybe walk a, them one through or two, a, three, a couple you know, of sentences. A couple of sentences. Exactly. And this is why I did this. This is why exactly. I circled these, exactly. and this is why, instead of just showing them the finished product. Just showing them, yes. Instead of yes. showing the finished product. Why do you have why did to I, walk Why did through? I do this? Why do you have to? Because I have to model what I want them to do. Yes. And how and I want them to pull out the same kind of information. Absolutely. So why is that so important? I think that, well, for me as a reader, like, to really critically think about the different, the, the topic, I have to actually understand it. Mm -hmm. And... There, if there's a word in there that I don't understand, it can hold up and stop the flow so of So how do we learning. articulate that concept to our students? Because what happens with our students when they're held up? They, they just get stuck and they, they stop get reading. Stuck. So it's good for you to even model maybe getting stuck. Right. You know, mm -hmm. saying, mm, I know this word, but um, I've seen it before, but I don't remember what it means. Let me okay. circle that or let me highlight that. So. When you are modeling your thinking, you're acting as if you are a student. Mm -hmm. You're not right. being facetious or sarcastic, right. but you're going through a process that's realistic 
for the students. And that's exactly what I did with this reading. The first, I yeah. went through and then I was like, oh, let me see if I can find a definition for this. So that, and so then I flipped into my textbook. And yes. that's what I would have wanted them to do. Yes. But I didn't do it yes. while they were watching. I did yes. this by myself. Yes. And then I told them to do this. Yes. But if they saw me doing it at yes. the same time. Yeah, I like yes. that. Okay. Yes. Okay. And one. All right, eyes up front. What we're going to do is some strategy called a close reading. You may have seen it in some of your other classes. Ms. Anderson, we're going to do one for science. Focus on the nitrogen cycle, which we have not focused on before. So, you read it once by yourself. Now we're going to read it, and what I want you to do is I want you to use a pen to circle any word that you don't know when you're reading it. So, don't do anything yet. Use a pen. I want you to highlight any kind of science or ecology based words. So, highlight any science or ecology based words. Like, if you look here at this example, I highlighted the nitrogen cycle. All right? Highlight any kind of science or ecology based words. Okay? I want you to circle words that you're not familiar with. Okay? Circle words that you're not familiar with. And what you need to do is, what, if you have a question, put it in the margin. Put it in the margin. Are you clear? Yeah. So, let's go to the first one. Let's go to the first one. So yeah, well, let's start with the cycle. The nitrogen cycle. Everybody see this? Yeah. The nitrogen cycle. How could you take that title and turn it into a question? How could you take that title? Hands, hands, hands. How could you take that title and turn it into a question? Miss King. What is the nitrogen cycle? So write that next to it. What is the nitrogen cycle? What about another question? What does the nitrogen cycle do? What does the nitrogen cycle do? So write that. I like that too. What does it do? Mr. Davis. I was going to say, how does What is the point of answering, asking these questions at the beginning? So you can understand it. So you can understand it? Have a better idea what you want to read about. So say it again. Have a better idea what you want to read about. So have a better idea of what we're going to read about. Yes, Ms. King. And so when you look through, you can answer your own questions. So when you look through, you're looking for certain amounts of information that to help answer your questions. Excellent. Okay. So the first part of that sentence, the Earth's atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen gas. I will underline that because that's important. The Earth's atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen gas. But one question I have is, what makes up the other 20%? Can you see how that? Water. So what makes up the other 20%? So that's my question that I will put. It doesn't tell you in here, but some of that we can tap into our prior knowledge. What do we know now that makes up the other 20%? Oxygen, Oxygen carbon, uh, 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 one more, hydrogen. and hydrogen. Remember our four, our main four. Now you already know because you know what the 80% is. Now you kind of can figure out. I think the 20% is here, but it's a good question for you to ask and then check to see if you find the answer. Does that make sense? Also, in there, I would circle molecular nitrogen only because I don't know if that's any different than regular nitrogen. So do you kind of get where we're going with this? I want you to do that for the rest, the other two paragraphs. So finish, the, finish these two paragraphs and go ahead and circle the words you don't know. Highlight the science words. I'm going to put the directions as to what I want from you. And then underline some good definitions. Do that now. All right? Oh.